Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Andrew Fian, and, and welcome to our uh, webinar, uh, Preparing for NDIS Certification. Uh, look, just letting you know that we'll get started off in a, in a couple of minutes, um, so please sit tight uh, while we wait for everyone to enter the session. Won't be long. Okay, looks like we've had enough people um, who've joined the the session. So I think we um, think we can can make a start. Um, so look, w w welcome everybody, and and thank you for joining us today for our webinar, uh, preparing for NDIS uh, certification presented by Citation Group. We're thrilled to have you here, and and whether you're a participant, uh, caregiver, or professional in the field, we 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 hope you find today's session uh, informative and and, and engaging. Um, but look, before we uh, deep dive into the presentation, I uh, just wanted to, to cover off some general housekeeping rules. Uh, if you have a question during the webinar, please use the, the Q&A feature uh, at the bottom of your screen and, and we'll try and answer uh, them at the end of, of the presentation. You, you don't need to wait um, until, the, until the end. So as we go through, um, you can type them throughout um, the webinar and, and, and they'll be coming through to us um, as we go. Um, also, yes, uh, the, the webinar is recorded, um, and you will be re you will be sent a recording um, link after the uh, after the session um, as well. So today, as the title suggests, um, we're going to talk to you about NDIS certification, and our aim is to provide you with valuable insights into the National Disability Insurance Scheme, uh, share resources, and and answer any questions you you, you may have. And look, we, we encourage participation. So, you know, please feel free to use the chat for questions and, and you know, raise comments and questions throughout the, the presentation. Today, uh, our webinar will be presented by Chrissy Sullivan. Um, Chrissy is an NDIS specialist with uh, citation certification and has 20 years experience uh, under her belt. Um, Chrissy's very passionate about building strong relationships with, with our clients to help them succeed in their certification journey. A um, little bit about me, uh, Andrew Fian um, is my name. Um, I'm a business development manager with Citation Group. Um, I, I work directly with, with businesses to help them uncover any gaps that they might have around their HR and safety processes and, and, and help them find solutions that streamline um, their people and, and safety management. Um, I've been with our group for um, going on eight years now um, and a, a large amount of my time working with Citation Group has actually been spent um, directly involved with our ageing disability health and human services um, industry team um, and a lot of the work that we do, um, particularly in the disability services um, space. So if you haven't attended one of our webinars in the past, uh, here's a little bit inf of information around Citation Group. So Citation Group's been around for over 30 years, uh, working to help Kiwi and, and Aussie businesses by providing complete workplace compliance solutions to help create better workplaces. Um, you know, from, from outsourced HR solutions and, and safety management systems to ISO certification, um, even into workplace law um, and, and migration, uh, Citation Group uh, can, can really support your business in, in all of these areas. And uh, 
Look, if you'd like to learn more about us, um, I'd be pleased to, to talk to you after today's webinar so we can work together on a, on a bespoke solution. Today, we're featuring citation certification. Now, with, with 30 years of experience, citation certification has guided thousands of successful organisations through the complexities of, of certification. Um, and, and that's ranging from ISO certification to, to NDIS compliance audits and, and, and training. Um, citation certification really is, you know, your, your certification partner. So that's, uh, that's all from me. Um, I'd, I'd like to now hand you over to, to Chrissy, um, who will take us through today's topic. Um, don't forget, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, uh, please pop them into the Q&A uh, Q feature um, below. Um, but look, uh, over, over to you, Chrissy. Thank you, Andrew. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you for your time. And I hope today's agenda will actually clear out some of those ideas and thoughts that you may be considering um, NDIS or you may be familiar with the NDIS or have friends, family, et cetera, who perhaps are um, under the NDIS scheme. So today's agenda, it's all about what is NDIS, the types of registration groups or, and the process um, and benefits um, of the NDIS. That's just a quick overview. So what is the NDIS? It is an Australian government initiative aimed at providing supports to individuals with permanent and significant disabilities. And it does represent one of Australia's most significant social policy reforms. It was launched on July 1, 2013, and it was introduced to empower people with disabilities to have greater control over accessing services and funding. The primary matter for NDIS providers was to be able to individualise each individual to find a tailored package that is specific to their needs and to be able to access those supports, um, including therapies, as well as, most importantly, community services available. The scheme is involving choice and control for participants and allowing them and their families or carers to select the supports that they require and into the community engagement more importantly. Overall, the NDIS does represent a major shift to Australian supports um, for individuals and disabilities focusing on empowerment and comprehensive care. A little bit of a background as to what NDIS participants fall into. There are three categories, self-managed, plan-managed and agency-managed. And instead of dwelling into each of those individually, they do provide different types of supports and different avenues of how participants can actually manage each of their supports. The supports for NDIS self-managed is more that the participant has the choice to then be able to choose and select and receive providers or supports for providers that are not registered. Plan managed is when a participant does have a plan manager and they are responsible for them providing the participant with supports that they select, whereas the agency managed is more for NDIA will be responsible for paying the participants' invoices. So let's start with understanding the NDIS registration process. Is your business looking at to become a registered provider for the NDIS scheme? For you provide any support and services to NDIS agency managed participants, you will need to register with the NDIS Commission in accordance with Section 73E of the National Disability Insurance Scheme Act 2013. The registration process requires businesses to engage with an approved quality auditor 
also known as uh, AQA, to undergo an audit against the NDIS practice standards. So how do you become an NDIS provider? Well, as I've previously mentioned, first you need to register through the NDIS Commission's website. You complete a application for registration and then approve, uh, engage in an NDIS um, AQA, as I mentioned before, similar to citation certification. Through our experience, we were previously known as QMS certification and with the acquisition, um, we are now rebranded as citation certification. And we have provided many audits for NDIS providers. Upon selection of um, a provider wanting to provide services, they do need to determine their type of audit um, scope. So as you can see, these are the one to 36 registration groups, which are applicable within the NDIS scheme. Each of those, you will see um, the, not only the registration number, but the registration class. In each of the classes, there's either a V or a C or a C plus, and that represents what type of audit each of those registration groups actually are, are applicable to that type of audit. There are also task-based questions in the application process, and that actually determines then if a provider is then providing higher risk registration groups. So these are similar to the foundation of um, the NDIS scheme, which is the core module, or if a provider does support people that are subjective to restrictive practices or to high intensity daily personal activities, which then reflect a module one audit. These are the NDIS modules. So upon selection of each of the registration groups, the commission then outlines what type of um, modules will be applicable to our audit. So you may have, as an example, a core module, and then perhaps if you're providing specialised support coordination, you'll be then reflected to undertake a core module as well as a module four. In other instances where providers are not pro uh, providing any of those modules from one to one to five, they would just undertake a core module audit. The verification module is just a desktop audit, and I will go into more detail um, in the next slide. Um, having a audit being conducted, it must be conducted by an approved quality auditor. Now, we are similar to an ISO um, certification body, um, but in this case, we are approved by the commission. And then the commission endorses us as a AQA and we're part of the JazzAnt accreditation model. The NDIS does maintain the NDIS providers registered, whereas let's say for an ISO certification, it is listed on the JazzAnt's register. So there's the two different registers for you. So the type of audit, as I said, does reflect two types of audit. A certification audit, where it is that you are providing high um, risk support services to participants, or there is the verification audit, which is for lower support um, that you will provide to participants. And each is determined, as I mentioned before, the path of which modules you will be undertaking for your audit. When we do, you do um, have that selection, Citation will provide a quotation to each of the providers based on the information that they do apply in their application, as well as, um, apart from that, it, it is based on the number of workers as well as the number of participants. 
So the verification audit, it is, as I mentioned earlier, a desktop audit, and it is only completed um, every three years. So at first, it is um, a document, it is purely a desktop document review based on human resource management, incident management, complaints management, and risk management. So as you can see, this is just a, a visual uh, pathway as to each of the steps for a verification audit. So as we said, um, we obtain your initial scope of audit document, which you will be issued by the commission um, that outlines all of your registration groups, as well as indicating that you will be required to undertake a verification audit. In this case, if you wish to obtain a quotation from citation, um, we then provide you with a proposal um, which outlines all of the information on your scope document, as well as the audit duration and pricing for that service. Upon acceptance, we do provide we do um, invoice immediately upon acceptance, um, and upon the invoice being paid, we then schedule in your audit. Um, and then uh, once the audit is confirmed, we undertake the audit. You will receive an audit report. From that audit report, we then provide that upon your um, acceptance that everything is true and correct in that audit report. We then submit that to the commission. Um, and then from there, the commission will then um, undertake their review and approval of your registration. After you receive approval from the um, commission, you will receive a certificate of registration. And then from that certificate, there is a expiry date. So as I mentioned, the verification audit is then requiring a re-verification after that three year period from that certificate date. From this visual diagram, you be able to compare how the verification audit is a simpler approach for providers providing lower based risks. The certification audit is more for providers delivering more complex or higher risk support activities. Yes, it is a more complex audit and it does take longer to complete compared to a verification audit. There are two stages initially for citation to be able to conduct your certification audit. The first step is stage one, which where the auditor will review your documentation as well as your policies, procedures and any evidence that is required to meet each of the modules um, and criteria. Stage two audit is an on-site audit. So this is where the documentation is then reflected into practice. So it's more of a physical implementation audit where the auditor will undertake worker as well as participant interviews, as well as file reviews. Now, this is the certification pathway uh, compared to the verification. The first line is exactly the same as a verification. You will receive your initial scope of audit document. You will engage with citation to be able to provide you with a quotation. Once again, we do provide, we do request that the invoice be paid. Then we undertake a, a stage one audit. As I mentioned, it is a desktop audit. So the auditor will reach out and request how you wish to deliver your documentation, whether it, it can be via share drive or a drop down box, that communication is made with the, with the auditor. Once the, the stage one is completed, you have a three month period to conduct your stage two audit. From there, if there are any non-conformities or improvements that need to be made, you do have a chance to be able to make those corrective actions. You will receive a very detailed audit report. Um, you'll receive then um, upon your acceptance that you are satisfied with the audit report and the outcomes. 
we then provide that audit report to the Commission once again for their um, review and approval. If you do not have any participants um, during that stage two audit, the, con the Commission will apply a condition on your registration. And that means then after a period of time that you have been providing supports to those participants, we will come back and do the last component of the audit, which is then um, to complete the participant file and um, interviews. And this is where your participants do have that right of choice to either opt in or opt out to be interviewed by the auditor. Prior to the condition one though, and the NDIS has provided you with your certificate of approval, from that date of certificate, we will 18 months later do a midterm audit. And that is to see that you are maintaining all of your policies and procedures. Then three years from that date that is on your certificate, we will conduct a recertification audit. And it is very similar, once again, to when you initially went through the initial certification audits of a stage one, stage two. As I mentioned before, the, um, with ISO clients, they are um, listed on the Jazz Ants register. Whereas for NDIS providers, they are um, reflected in the public register. So this is where we can search um, a business name via, or a provider's name um, by their business name or ABN number. It will then reflect once you um, search now, it will list all of the providers that you've searched for. And then if you click on the search more, it will then provide all of their registration groups as well as locations. There are benefits of being a registered provider. Um, it does improve consistency um, across all states and, and territories. It does focus on capacity building and education, not only just for the wor uh, worker orientation model, but quality, safety and yourselves. It does um, imply the NDIS code of conduct where it does state out clearly expectations for all NDIS providers, whether registered or unregistered. It does encourage best practice among NDIS providers and how to manage risk to NDIS participants more importantly. The worker screening arrangements and database ensures a national portable check for all NDIS workers. But most importantly, it is the transparency offered by the quality and safeguarding framework processes, which empowers participants to be safe and provide high quality NDIS providers to help them achieve their goals. So your NDIS certification journey, we are a team of experienced professionals and we do try and keep the process simple and straightforward. We try and work alongside you to be able to take you through not only the application process, but through the certification or verification audit. As an AQA, we only do provide NDIS auditing services across Australia, but we are unable to advise or provide any consultancy um, services um, as part of our impartiality process and code of conduct. We do have a business partner program that we do work with consultants should you require any um, support in building your policies and procedures and, and they do take you through the training, the understanding, the implementation of having your correct documentation in place. So if you're ready to begin your NDIS process, we do have a friendly team that you can reach out to. So being your first point of contact, um, we'll have the contact details later to, um, if you wish to send uh, an email or have a, have a phone conversation to be able to support you through the audit cycle, or whether you wish to have just a generic question that we can answer, or if not, put through our Q&A.
So that's the end of my presentation. I hope it gave you a bit of an insight as to the processes, um, what a provider is required to go through to become registered and what our actual role is in the NDIS scheme. Wow. So, look, thanks so much for an insightful presentation, uh, Chrissy. And you know, look, let's um, let's get stuck into to all the questions that have that have come through. So, look, we we only we only have time to answer a, a few questions to today. Um, but look, don't don't stress if if we don't have time to answer your specific um, question today, we'd be more than happy to talk to you offline. Um, and look, we'll, we'll certainly be in touch um, after the webinar to to provide you. Um, responses um, to, to your questions that are provided. But um, look, one, one question that's come up a few times, um, Chrissy, is NDIS registration mandatory? Let me say something too, Andrea. Hopefully these questions aren't too difficult. So if I'm unable to answer them, I do have a technical team to be able to back me up another day. <laughs> um, is the NDIS man mandatory? Well, you must be registered provider to be able to provide the following supports, whether you are an SDA. Sorry, I shouldn't use an acronym. Um, if you um, are providing specialist disability accommodation, specialist behaviour support services. Um, if you are managing and funding um, participants, if you're providing plan management services, you must also get registered if you plan to use regulatory restrictive practices. Um, so if you have any of those supports that you're having to, um, wanting to provide to Participants, the answer would be yes. Thanks, thanks for that, Chrissy. Um, second question: What if I want to be an unregistered provider? So almost an extension there. Yeah. So unregistered providers can deliver support and services to participants, um, except for those that I had mentioned before, and only participants who are self or plan manage their NDIS funding can choose to get supports and services from unregistered providers. Thanks, Chrissy. Um, so, certainly one I, I know that comes up in conversations with registered um, providers that, that I work with, but um, so once, once I've gone through um, registration, so once I am registered, can I add more modules and registration groups um, to, to my registration? Uh, yes, that is possible. Whether that be at the time of audit, um, the auditor provided it does not increase the audit duration time, we are able to then review um, any other additional registration groups. Or you may be able to... Um, submit a formal variation form to the commission and then they will provide approval and we undertake, so it's called, an out of cycle audit. So whether that be prior to your next audit, let's say after you've conducted your certification audits and it's prior to your midterm audit um, and because then you've got a participant that is wanting to obtain those services, we can then do an out of cycle audit for the additional modules as well as registration groups. Thanks for that. Uh, thanks, Chrissy. Got three out of three, did I, Andrew? No, you did. You did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so, um, look, like, like I said, guys. Um, we, we we only have a chance to get to a few, but I can see that there are other questions that have come through. But like we said, look, we're more than happy to pick this up offline. And, and as Chrissy had mentioned before, we have a, a team of technical specialists as well who can also um, provide some some answers um, to some of those questions as well. So that's uh, that's that's all we have time for today. Um, look, re really really appreciate. Uh, everyone taking the time uh, to to join us today, and 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 look, re really appreciate the engagement and questions that came through, and, and particularly in discussing the, the important aspects of of the NDIS. And and look, 
we, we really hope you found the information valuable and that it's provided you with some some clarity um, on, on the NDIS scheme. And uh, if you if you have any further questions or, or would like to connect with us, um, please don't don't hesitate uh, to to reach out. Uh, you can simply scan the the QR code there on the screen, or we have our um, email and, and contact details there. But look, thank you everyone for joining us, and and thanks very much, Chrissy, for your um, insightful presentation today. Really appreciate it. My pleasure, Andrew, and thank you for everyone taking the time. Thanks, everyone. Bye.